All right, let's talk about the DICOM composite services. I think a lot of people are struggling with this based on your test grades and the questions I'm getting. So I want to go back through these again to make sure that we all understand them perfectly. This is what humans see. Humans see an image. Hopefully you recognize that this image is a lumbar spine. There is the lumbar spine right there and you can see some ribs, and you see the top of the pelvis, pelvis structures, all good. That's what human sees. This is what the computer sees. This is the image file for that image. So from here down to here, you have something called the DICOM header. This is information about that image. And then down here where you just see all these crazy Y's, this is the actual image itself. That is the ones and zeros that turn into the actual grayscale image. But above the grayscale image, you have this DICOM header. And so just to relate this to the media that we we're talking about, from this cursor here all the way to right here, there's 128 characters that would be the preamble. And here's the prefix we talked about, DICM. So we know that this is a DICOM file, with the preamble prefix. So DICOM header, and then the actual image pixel data. So let's relate this to Coke bottles. Let's say that this Coke bottle represents a DICOM object. And so the brown liquid inside is the image pixel data, and the wrapper that goes around the outside represents the DICOM header file. So this is going to be our DICOM object. If you were to separate the DICOM header file from the image pixel data, you would have no idea what was in that bottle, what that image pixel data represents. So to go back to this file, I can see that right here it says, x-ray lumbar spine complete so i know that this image down here that i can't read what all these y's are i know it's a picture of a lumbar spine because it tells me the dicom header if you took the dicom header off you would just have a bunch of image pixel data without knowing what it is anyway let's go on to the services c echo c echo has no object c echo just helps us to know if things are available on our network. So let's say I wanted to know if the Coke machine down the hall was still there or if it had been taken away by maintenance. I could walk down this hallway, go around the corner and go, oh yes, the Coke machine is still there. That would essentially be a C echo of the Coke machine. I'm just finding out where things are at with a C echo. C find. C find doesn't move image pixel data. It doesn't move the whole object. It just looks at the DICOM header file, like this label, and says, hmm, where could I find, in this case, cherry colas? If I went down the hall and around the corner to the Coke machine, I would find a shelf, the third shelf, that has cherry colas. I'm just finding something. There's no the object is not being moved. I'm just locating where it lives in my neighborhood, on my network. C move. So if I want to move my DICOM object, which is this Coke bottle, if I want to move it from here to there, I need a service, right? And that service would be C move. So I would move the object from this location to that location. Voila. See move. I moved it from the cabinet to the chair. It's important to remember that see move uses two connections. It uses one connection to talk about how the data is going to be moved and the other connection actually moves the object from one point to another. So that's move. Now notice that move is going from one place to another. Here's the difference. A get always brings whatever the object is back 
to the original location, right? So I'm actually sitting at my desk making this video and I am going to move my DICOM object from the cabinet to the chair. I didn't bring it back to where I'm sitting at my desk. I just moved it from one place to another. A get is to take that DICOM object and bring it back to where I'm at. I'm going to get it and bring it back. The other thing a get can do is a get can use a third party software or a user password, some sort of software code that may be required to unlock that image data and pull it back. So in this case, I would need money. Money is my third party software or software key to unlock the Coke from the archive here and bring it back to my location. It's also important to remember the get only uses a single connection to move things. So get always comes back to the originating location. It uses one connection. C store. C store is always used to put stuff into a place where you're going to store it. It's not ready for consumption. I'm going to store it, for example, in a refrigerator. So here's my DICOM object sitting in the refrigerator being stored. This is exactly like what happens when you put images from modalities into packs. Right? So PAX's job is to store images, just like a refrigerator stores cold food, PAX stores images. So if you're going to put something into PAX, you're going to store it in PAX. So let's run that whole thing back. C echo is used to verify DICOM connectivity. In other words, is the Coke machine there? C find is used to locate patient or study information, i.e. is there cherry Coke in the Coke machine? C move is used to move images from one place to another. Move the Coke from the Coke machine to my office. C get is used to locate and move studies. Right? So I'm going to go to the Coke machine, get a Coke, and bring it back. That's a C get. C store is used to store studies in the archive. I'm going to go get a Coke and put it in the fridge to save for later. So hopefully that helped you better understand the C services. Thank you for watching.